is such a weird angle. Why do me shows look so big? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, so this is probably, I'm just putting my fluffy socks on. This is probably the most, no, this is the most laid back video I've ever done in my whole life. Okay, currently I'm ill. I'm on my period. I've had a really stressful few weeks that I'm not going to get in now, right now. Also, I've got a mad story time coming, um, but I've got to wait a while for like the court date and stuff to go for it. It's a long story, but it's an amazing story time. You guys are going to be like, what the hell only goes on in your life? Also, little update. You know how I've got like a bad stomach? You still know from like my videos and that. I can't have gluten and dairy, they're like the main ones I can't have. And I can't have like pop. Well, <laughs> my period cravings are coke. So I've got all that. There's a hair hanging off it, nice. These. And these. So I will be eating throughout this video things I'm not supposed to be eating. I'm the more at the state right now, but we're just not gonna talk about it, okay? Because I'm spotty, I can't help it, I want my period, so let's just not. Let's just not rehash that. As you know, I've took a few weeks off of YouTube, but a few months actually. It's just I've been going through so much in my personal life. Um, but I will get into it on a story time. <laughs> um, but there's just been so much going on. So, like, I just haven't had the chance. And then on top of that, I've been doing all my mocks, which is basically like sitting in A level because, yeah. But oh my god, I need to sort my hair. You say I'm so sorry about the way I'm looking. I'm just kind of hoping that the audience right now he was watching are mostly girls because I sit and I think why don't I have a boyfriend and then I come on YouTube looking like this probably is why um so for today's video we're gonna do um something called am I the a-hole I'm not gonna say the word because I don't want to get in trouble and basically what it is is like it's a thing on Twitter where people type up situations that have been going on and they're like am I the one in the wrong here and some of them you actually are like I don't know are you in the wrong is the other person in the wrong it's actually quite funny when I move this moves because I'm on my bed so sorry also I've just got like loads of pillows stacked here so I can set up because I don't have to set me ring light up because I'm too tired to do that <laughs> also I'm dyslexic so if I say something wrong or if I stutter don't be an a-hole about it okay okay so um, am I the a-hole for making my wife choose between me and her best friend? I mean, from the title, probably you are. Okay, so. I am preparing for an upcoming surgery at the end of May. I have a respiratory condition that I've been suffering from. My wife has been very supportive and accommodating of all my needs. She has endured so much by shouldering this burden with me and I can never describe how much support she's been with everything how supportive she's been with everything that's going on with me sorry guys um the problem is that our best friend's wedding is at the end of may specifically on the 27th and my surgery takes place on the exact same date now the 27th was not the, the original date of her friend's wedding it was supposed to be on the 18th but it got changed her friend informed us about it on short notice and my wife wanted to go but it's an eight hour trip since the wedding is held in the groom's hometown my wife and I discussed this and I bluntly told her I needed her there for my surgery. She told me that it's her best friend's wedding and this will hopefully be her only wedding and she wanted to attend. She asked if I could get a friend as my support but I don't didn't think this was right as I was even puzzled she'd asked me to get a substitute while she goes to a friend's wedding. I asked if her friend's wedding was more important than my health. She argued that there was nothing wrong with it and I won't need her since the medical team will take care of me. Then she said by refusing, I was making her choose between me and her best friend. We went back and forth arguing and she insisted she wants to attend her friend's wedding. I told her she was being unreasonable and I never expected her to prioritise a wedding over my health. She loudly yelled, what do you want me to do? I might lose my friend over this, then stop talking to me. I think I handled this badly and acted in an ungrateful manner. But I think she's the one who doesn't understand the difference since my surgery is an emergency and her best friend is a good friend, so she'd understand, right? So am I wrong for what I said? <laughs> <Good dog. laughs> Do you know about being honest, right? I actually don't think he's in the wrong here. Like, if my husband was sitting him around and be like, yeah, I'm going in surgery, it would be best friend's wedding. Yes, that would be terrible. You'd miss your best friend's wedding. Like, that would be horrible. But 
I mean, surgery is a bit different to wedding. Yeah, you, you could miss a wedding and everyone will be fine. If you miss one surgery and something, God forbid, went wrong. I don't know. I don't know. But then saying that he's our best friend's wedding. Also, he said that just being really accommodatory, accommodating, <laughs> you know what I mean? And like really helpful for like the whole illness. So I think it's kind of, I don't know, it's a bit unfair to be as harsh on her as he has been. I don't feel like you should have put her in the position to choose, but saying that, I don't think she should have put you in the position where you would have had to ask her. So there's actually really mixed things about this in the comments. So one of them said, I don't understand why people would want you to sit around waiting for a surgery to be finished. Like, can I not go and take my mind off it until you're done? Or you can just call me when you're done. I think that's a bit harsh, considering it's your husband. My dog has literally sat right where I had my laptop, so that's good. Um, I'm just going to have to, like, hold it in the air. Another person commented saying, uh, if, my husband, if my husband had a possibly life-saving sur life surgery on the same day, I would not attend the wedding, and the bride should understand. This is insane. Yeah, I agree. I think it's insane to even have to ask. Surely she should have just... I don't know. It's actually quite hard. Like, really smudge. Um. Okay, so, next one. I'm either a-hole for disinviting a co-worker for perpetually... Perpetually? I'm just going to put it up. I don't know how you pronounce that. Spoiling things. Okay, well, this is a long one. I hate reading. Almost every Friday, my co-workers and I will go out and get drinks and socialise. More often than not, it's open invitation for the entire office. And when people, and even people outside of our team will join. We typically have a great time, but only when Logan, 20-year-old male, doesn't show. Logan meanwhile means well, but is easily excitable and engages people in conversations they're not interested in. The worst of his behaviour has to do with spoiling movies, shows, games, etc. A few weeks ago, I mentioned that I had tickets to go see a new Mortal Kombat movie over the weekend. Logan lit up and immediately responded, you'll love the scene where spoiler happens when spoiler shows up. I was bummed and walked away without continuing the conversation. Later that same night, another co-worker was discussing a TV show that she was a few episodes behind in logan blurts out i can't believe that beloved character dies in episode whatever number um amy who had obviously not yet watched it just went silent and turned away logan laughed and said i just can't help it i get too excited none of us were amused i would not be happy with that a few days later in our team only group chat Someone brought up Logan's tendency to spoil things and admitted that they wished he weren't invited to outings because of it. Multiple people agreed and began to list everything Logan had spoiled for them. This in mind, I didn't add Logan to the email invite for the next week's hangout. He noticed he never got an invite and began to ask around. He pulled me aside as I left for lunch and let me know I excluded him by mistake. Rather than try and play it off, I just told him the truth. But in fact, he spoils everything. He's obnoxious and rude. I told him that joining conversations just to spoil things is bad enough, but he also starts conversations with spoilers. Logan was immediately defensive, claiming it's not his fault, we're slow to watch play, etc. And he's just making conversation. I told him that if he swore he'd be more conscious about this habit, he could join us on Friday. He came and lo and behold, spoiled a plot of a movie I wanted to see at theatre. Out of frustration, I called him a day word and told him that... This is exactly why no one socialised with him. He left soon after and even though what I said was even though I said what everyone was thinking, I felt like an ear hole. Am I the ear hole? Right, so I agree that is annoying that he's spoiling all that stuff, right? But by the sounds of this, this person's an adult, okay? I'm not being funny, <laughs> but I think you need to come up a bit. The person here i think he needs to go up a little bit yes it's annoying that he's spoiling stuff but why give him the fuel because obviously you are talking in front of him about things or about movies and stuff just don't mention that you watch stuff don't tell them what you watch don't tell them what games you watch or what team you support or anything like that shows you watch and then you can't actually spoil it for you and when he does don't react this person commented right saying there's no way that he's doing this by accident he does it on purpose every time because he thinks it's funny to irritate everyone but then he probably has a laugh about it later with his friends 
and i think that's true like i bet he's doing it on purpose he knows what he's doing so if he spoils stuff be like oh I don't watch it anyway do you know what i mean don't tell him you're gonna go watch movies you can't really exclude someone like that like i think it's a bit you know because it does make you the a-hole so next one am i the a-hole 27 year old male for not paying for my girlfriend 28 year old female to come on my family's vacation even though i could easily afford to right this one's not as long so my girlfriend of almost three years just bought a new condo that we recently moved into she worked a full-time job and for the past year also worked a part-time job to save for the down payment down payment and other maintenance costs she bought it about two months ago and then had to buy a washer dryer fix a plumbing issue etc my family goes on a yearly trip to my home country japan we have relatives there. My girlfriend could not afford to go because of recent expenses related to the condo. My older brother was very curious as to why she was not coming on the trip. When I told her she could not afford it, he asked, but you can pay for her to come, so why not do it? He knows I have a lot of money saved since I have lived with my parents since I was 20, until I was 26, rent free. I told him that it's not my job to provide a vacation for her, but she's an adult. He was shocked and thought I was a disgrace that she worked two jobs to provide a place for us to live, yet I could not provide a vacation for her in return. He even offered to pay for her to come, although I think he just said this to pay me off. So am I the a-hole? Yeah, oh, like I'm sorry, you are the a-hole here. Yeah. Like I'm not even questioning this one. Like if I was this one for like, it's not even, I understand if you were with her for like a couple of months, but th almost three years, it's just doing all that also i'm confused she's paying for all that for your condo why are you not paying for that or are you paying half as well for the dryer the washer and fixing the plumbing are you paying half as well um but you've just got more money because you've saved up because you've lived with your parents right okay sorry that is that is too far i actually think that is too far i think you should have just paid for it. i think your brother's right like fair enough you know what if she had have asked it to pay for it i would have been a bit like no but she hasn't asked for you to pay for it she's not expecting you to but you should i think that's bad me i think that's bad crack <laughs> actually is yes. i'm not even joking you've got the money could you see and you could easily afford to not that you could afford to you could easily afford to so why not just pay for it yeah i think you are the a-hole 100 percent. just put my hair back in the bun because i really can't be bothered with it down okay so Oh my god, I feel ill. <laughs> oh, I am a baby. My stomach. Okay, anyway. Okay, <laughs> so. Am I the a hole for enforcing my kids' friends to follow the same phone rules as our kids? Mm, okay. My kids are 17, 14, and 8. The 8 year old doesn't have a phone, but my two teens do. The rules are that they are not allowed to have their phone in the bedroom alone or bathroom during any time of the day and at night they bring us me and their dad their phones and we lock them up <coughs> sorry that was really too wrong these rules are mostly because i know how vile the internet can be i've had younger siblings who grow up during the rise of the internet and tell me horror stories as well, I clearly, very clearly remember things I saw on Omegle as an adult. I really don't want to risk any of these issues with my kids, as it helps them to not procrastinate with homework or chores, and we spend a lot of more, and we spend a lot more family time together. This past week, my oldest, so that's a seventeen-year-old, had a new friend come over. The girls were going to my daughter's room, and so I asked for their phone. My daughter looked embarrassed, but handed over her phone. Her friend then asked me what I meant. I told her the rule and she told me that she wanted to keep her phone. I then told them that they could stay out in the living room. The girl got a little irritated but ended up staying in the living room. The hangout then turned into a sleepover and I called the kid's dad and asked him a bit about our rules. The dad was a little sceptic of our rules. We get that often, but he agreed. He told me he would relay this information to the mom as she was working right okay night time came and everyone gave me their phones except for my daughter's friend she said she felt more comfortable keeping her phone in case of an emergency i told her if there was an emergency she can come and wake my husband up me and my husband up 
She then told me she really didn't feel comfortable with that in case she wanted to text her mum to text her mum to sleep. I told her that if that was the case, she needed to go home because in our house the rule is no phones in the bedroom. Period. She called her mum in another room. I could hear her crying, and I felt bad that I'd stood my ground. The mum apparently had just gotten off work and not totally bad about it, and thought our phone room was creepy and invasive. And she told me that when she got to my house. She said that I should have just let her daughter keep her phone. I told her that her daughter needs to follow my rules. My oldest is now embarrassed and really upset with me. And even my husband thinks I should have, have relaxed a little. I didn't think there's anything wrong, but am I the a-hole for not letting the girl keep her phone? Just to clarify, the girl knew before sleeping over that they had to turn their phones in before bed. She also knew her phone was included. She was not randomly blindsided. Okay, there is a lot to go on this and I really, really hate this, <laughs> like, so much. So, as you know, well, you probably know, I'm still 17, for a few weeks anyway. I'm 17, okay? If I went to one of my friend's houses for sleepover and their mum asked me for their phone, I'm a very polite person, okay? But I would not give them my phone, I'd go home. Because that is, like, a really big invasion of privacy. And I'm actually quite concerned for the 17 year old i understand right with the 14 year old kid i think when they get 15 16 17 no way can you do that that's like really invasive and i do think it's a bit creepy why are they not allowed to i just don't get it like obviously yes the internet's terrible blah 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 blah. but what is the difference between sitting in the sitting room on the phone it's still the same internet i don't get it i think it's a control thing i don't like when parents do that also another thing, I've got quite bad like you just know what anxiety, but I've got quite bad separation anxiety and stuff. So I don't really sleep out that often. And if I was sleeping at a friend's house, I would need my phone just because it would give us major anxiety if I couldn't get a hold of my mum or if do you know what I mean? I'd need it was at all times. And the fact that you heard that kid crying on the phone to my mum and she still was enforcing the rule, I think it's a power thing, maybe when parents do that. I don't think it's anything to do with like keeping your kids safe. I think it's a power thing. So mum put um Love how the main argument is what if there is an emergency. No, nope. judgment's based on statistics. Unlikely anything will happen. People survived fine without phones go outside. That's so, that's such an ignorant thing to say and a very uneducated thing to say, I think, because you don't know what that child's mental health's like. Um, and I think that's actually the main concern. You don't know what the kid's mental health's like. I'm saying kid, the same, the same age as me. Um, no. I think this is wrong. I think it's actually really, really wrong. It's actually irritated us. Side note as well, but I don't understand what parents like this, right? Do you seriously think that taking a kid's phone off them, a 17-year-old, nearly adult person's phone off them, every night and not letting them have it in the room, and you think that that is going to socialise them properly, that's going to make them a good parent? Because like, if that was me, I would just become really good at lying. And I just wouldn't trust my parents, I wouldn't tell my parents anything, because that is the sort of relationship you're setting up with your kids when you take the phones off them, instead of teaching them how to use the internet properly. Um, you know, I think... I think parents, a lot of parents are so uneducated on the internet and they just say bad, 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 all the bad that comes from it, but they don't see the positives. And there are so many positives that come from the internet. Um, I think parents need to like, educate themselves and learn that you, you just need to teach kids how to use it in their safety um, and how to separate yourself from it if you get to a point. Because I get to a point sometimes if I'm in like, a bad place or something. Like, for example, when I split up with my ex boyfriend a while ago, paid cheat on his and he'd made loads of nasty comments about the way I look. And at that point, I was very self conscious. So I like, I had to separate myself from the internet for a while because I was saying like Molly me and all them sort of people Kim Kardashian and looking how beautiful they are but it just wasn't it wasn't good for us you know what I mean I think you just need to teach your kids how to use the internet properly I think taking the phones off them not letting them have it in the rooms and all this that doesn't teach them how to use it properly that's just teaching them like you're in control like and I don't get that yeah there's another one this one's so funny right am I the a-hole for threatening to kick out my sister-in-law if she became a vegan <laughs> what I know the title sounds bad, but hear me out. <laughs> I'm a 32-year-old female, and I'm currently divorcing my soon-to-be ex-husband, who is a 38-year-old male. Even though we are not together anymore, I'm still very close to his 27-year-old sister. Let's call her A. A lost her job during the pandemic and couldn't during the pandemic, not a pandemic, and couldn't afford to pay rent anymore. So I let her move in since I have a pretty big house that's mostly unused since my husband moved out. I don't want any money for it, but since she's home 24-7 and I work in a 50-hour job, we keep an agreement that she makes the food for the two of us. It's all worked perfectly until two days ago, she said she wants to be vegan and won't cook meat anymore. <laughs> what? Okay. Now, hear me out. I regularly, regularly have to lift heavy objects for my job, 
So I need the meat to stay in shape. <laughs> no. Also, this is my house. I don't want to be forced to diet. I don't want. I started shouting at her that she can pack her things and get the F out of my house if he doesn't change her mind. She started crying, calling me a psycho. <laughs> um, yesterday, her parents called me and told me I was being too harsh with her and that I, I am the e-hole. I even got angry text messages from my husband about how evil I am, blah, blah, blah. However, I think I'm I am in the right. Am I the e-hole? Again, I think it's like a really uneducated thing to say because vegans right they, they don't just they don't just eat kale like they eat good food they eat really nice food that's like healthy for you and if they make it right and if they're educated enough on being vegan they can make you food that's got more like um nutrition than a piece of meat that's been processed and stuff from the supermarket like do you know what i mean like i think you're being a bit dramatic telling it to get the f out of your house i mean come on really really you can't invite her to come live with you and then they're cooking your food and that and then you no no that isn't a real reaction um someone commented saying has there ever been a single post that started out with he am i out that didn't end terribly <laughs> like he's so true right i'm gonna do the last one now and i think this is actually quite a good one to end on because i think there's gonna be mixed opinions on this one but must fall out for us or would it okay so am i the a-hole for asking com for compensation for something my kid destroyed we hired a babysitter we've had a few times at a good rate of 20 dollars an hour the babysitter is a 19 year old woman if that matters i think maybe the age will affect something my wife had to rush to work in an emergency and i was already at work the babysitter is already familiar with our rules our three-year-old is only allowed in the living room, playroom and dining room when eating. The babysitter, I guess, had an emergency herself and had to be on the phone for 20 minutes. For some reason, she decided to take the call outside. Her rationale was that the, she, it was private and she didn't want our child to listen in. The three-year-old child, really? Um, in those 20 minutes, our daughter was able to move the couch to the living room gate, scale the gate. Oh my God. In those 20 minutes, our daughter was able to move the couch to the living room gate, scale the gate, head down to the basement and pull one of my guitars off the wall. The neck is roped and Luthia said it, the neck needs to be replaced. Okay, so there's something wrong with these guitar, right? I'm asking my babysitter at the front of the bill of a new guitar, not a repair or a neck replacement as the alternatives diminish the value of the guitar as there'll be a mismatch in neck to the body and it severely impacts the value and a net repair does too. It's $2,200. Am I the e-hole here or is she? Her parents are telling us we're responsible. She's offering only to have a baby sat for free. Our friends are saying we're too harsh and it was her response but it was her responsibility, right? So I would say that you are the e-hole here. I'm not gonna lie, because at the end of the day, right, I, I know she just went out on the floor, which is really, really, really stupid because baby, the, I know it's not a baby, but it's only three. It could have got really hurt. She shouldn't have went out on the phone for 20 minutes. That's, like, ridiculous. Um, like, really, really daft. So I understand that you're annoyed, right? But the kids only broke the neck. No, not the kids. Not broke the neck, no. The kids only broke the neck of the guitar, right, okay? Um so you shouldn't really ask her to get a full brand new one i know it severely impacts the value but she's offering a babysit for free and everything I, I don't know i think you're being quite harsh i really do think you're being quite harsh people in the comments definitely do not agree with me um the babysat did nothing um it's her job to be watching the child so she should pay the set I was not watching the kid and that directly led to the damages. Um yeah, I don't know. But I think expecting a teenager to pay two thousand two hundred when she babysits, she's not gonna be able to pay that. I don't really think that's fair. I, I would say it's fair to ask her to pay for the neck replacement though. But ask her for a full new guitar. Yeah, no, I'd probably ask her for the neck replacement. Um, and some free babysitting. Like, 
She definitely shouldn't have been out on the phone for 20 minutes, so that's ridiculous. Okay, could have got really hurt. I don't know if I'd want to have babysitting your kid ever again, to be honest. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I know this it wasn't like a very planned out video or anything, but I just thought, you know, I haven't been on here for so long, and the thought of like making like planning a video and everything is just getting us overwhelmed. So I just thought I'd do like a more chilled out video, and yeah, um, so I hope you enjoyed it. So yeah, thanks for being patient as well, because I know like I haven't posted in ages, but it's just there's been so much going on in my personal life. Um, like, you did probably faint if I told you all the stuff. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to get going. I love you all, angels, and I hope you're all safe, and goodbye.